Hello friends, today we will discuss about the federal system of government in Indian polity. Under this federal system, we will learn the types of governments and India as a federal system. Federal system India satisfies the features of the federal system of government. Before knowing what is federal system, first we will learn about federation. What is a federation? Federation is a word taken from the Latin fides, which means agreement or treaty. Again, this federation is of two types, integration and disintegration. Integration means combining, disintegration means dividing. In a federation, which is of integration type, there the states or parts of the country are combined together to form a complete single nation. But whereas in disintegration type of federation, one single country is divided into states or provinces. The example for the integration type of federation is the United States of America, whereas the example for the disintegration type of federation is Canada. And these parts of the nation that are states are called with different names in different countries. They are called states in United States, even in India we call states and provinces in Canada. In Switzerland they are called cantons and in Russia they are called republics. By this statement we can understand that all these countries, America, Canada, Switzerland and Russia are federal types of governments. The United States of America is the oldest federation formed in 1787 after the American Revolution. Now we will see the types of governments. There are two types of governments, unitary government and federal government. In the unitary type of government, only central government is given the power and for the state governments there is no power. Examples of unitary type of government are Britain, France, Japan, Sweden, China, Italy, Norway. In the federal type of government, there are two governments, central government and the state government. And the central government and the state government, they have got independent power. Power is divided. Here, there is power division of power. But in the unitary type of government, there is no division of power. Only single-handedly, the central government will get all the power. Examples of uh, federal governments are USA, Australia, Switzerland, Canada, Russia, Brazil, Argentina. Now we will see the details of the features of the unitary system of government. The unitary system of government has only a single government. As we already discussed, only the center has uh, power. In this, the type of constitution is may be written or unwritten. And there will be no division of power in unitary system of government. And the supremacy of the constitution, it may be the constitution in this type of government may be supreme or may not be supreme. If uh, examples are Japan, in the Japan there is supremacy of constitution. But in the Britain, constitution is not the supreme. Coming to the quality of the constitution, in the unitary type of government, some have rigid constitution and some have flexible constitution. The constitution where it is rigid is France. The example of constitution where it is flexible is Britain. Again, judiciary is also independent or non-independent. That means Supreme Court and the High Courts, they depend on the government and non-dependent on the government. Legislature is bicameral legislature or unicameral legislature. That is two houses like in India, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Examples for this bicameral government in the unitary type of government is Britain. Unicameral system is followed in China. If we observe that in the unitary type of government, except for the single government and the division of power, rest are all fluctuating from one to one. There is no definite variable for the constitution, its supremacy, quality, judiciary and legislature. Coming to the features of the federal system of government, it is not like the unitary system where the variables vary from one to another. 
here all are definite the government of federal system is dual government here both the central government and state government are given power the constitution is a written one the division of power is followed in the federal system both the union and states and definitely in a federal system the supreme is the constitution the supreme law and the judiciary is independent it does not depend on the government legislature is bicameral it contains lower house and the upper house now we will see how india is going to satisfy the federal features of the government india has a federal system though india satisfies many of the almost all the features of the federal system we don't call it a federation it is because it has some unitary features as well here there are two types of federations we previously discussed they are disintegration and integration type disintegration type is example is canada whereas integration is america and here india follows the canadian ma model of federation its formation is disintegration formed through disintegration actually the whole india is divided into separate states not the states united to form india here india uses the term union to federal we don't use federal we use only union but in america they use federal canada also uses the term union more powers are given to the center in india the federal features that indian government satisfies are dual government it is a written constitution it has a division of power and the supremacy is of the constitution and the constitution is rigid the independence of judiciary and the legislature is bicameral now we will go into each of them india has a dual government which means two governments they are center and the state government the constitution of india divided the power between the center and the states the constitution of india separated the categories for the center and the state to administration center central government takes care of the matters like defense currency international relationships economy and communications whereas the state governments take care of the subjects like regional interest health agriculture public order that are up to the state level the constitution of india is a written one it is also the lengthiest constitution in the world it contains preamble 448 articles these 448 articles are divided into 25 parts 12 schedules and 101 amendments 101st amendment is the latest one it, it is the introduction of goods and service tax on september 8 2016 originally during the time of formation the constitution of india contained preamble 395 articles in 22 parts and 8 schedules now coming to the division of power the division of power is carried by the constitution of india The, the constitution of india divided the powers into three lists union list state list and the concurrent list these lists are included in the seventh schedule of the constitution of india in the union list it, it mentioned all the powers that are allotted to the center in the state list all the powers to the states are mentioned whereas in the concurrent list there are subjects that are included in which both the center and states can take the power and handle if in any occasion while dealing the matters in the concurrent list if the opinions of the central government and the state government are not the same and the conflict arises during that situations the constitution gave the power to the center to take the lead there are also some residuary subjects actually what is a residuary subject it means those items that does not fall in any of these three list union list state list and concurrent list these are called residuary subjects again the constitution gave the power to the center to handle the subjects of residuary at present there are 100 subjects in the union list 61 subjects in the state list and 52 subjects in the concurrent list 
but originally during the time of formation union list contained 97 subjects state list contained 66 subjects and the concurrent list contained 47 subjects coming to the supremacy of the constitution in india constitution is the supreme law it has the power of division of powers everything in india happens within the provisions of the constitution if something is deviated from the provisions of the constitution then supreme court come into action the supreme court declares the actions that are deviated from the provisions of the constitution as invalid all the crucial organs of a government of india legislature administration and jurisdiction all these should have to follow the rules and regulations of the constitution and they have to work within the provisions of the constitution this definitely proves that the constitution is the supreme law in india coming to the rigid constitution no doubt there should be a constitution that is rigid because to maintain the supremacy of the constitution actually what is a rigid constitution a rigid constitution is nothing but a constitution which cannot be easily changed or amended actually to amend the constitution there needs it needs a lot of time both the central and states actions and some majority special majority from the parliament there should be committees reviews a lots of discussion it takes a lots of time so to amend the constitution in india it is not so easy that's why the constitution in india is a rigid constitution independent judiciary the judiciary in india does not depend on the government judiciary is the court's law in india the head of the judiciary is the supreme court supreme court the main function of the supreme court is to protect the supremacy of the constitution and the other function is to settle the central and the state's conflicts. If we think that if the judiciary is not independent and it depends on the government, then what happens? Then at that time, if the judiciary is dependent on the government, the supremacy of the constitution cannot exist. It won't work, so it won't be the supreme law. And also if the judiciary is dependent on the government then the decisions made in the matters of the center and the state's issues or conflicts they may deviate from the justice. Coming to the bicameral legislature that means bicameral means two chambers or houses. These houses are upper house and lower house in India. Lower house is called Lok Sabha whereas upper house is called Rajya Sabha. Lok Sabha represents the people of India. Rajya Sabha represents the states of India. Out of these two, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha is powerful than Rajya Sabha. Even though it is less powerful, Rajya Sabha, we need Rajya Sabha because it protects the rights and interests of the states when the center is unnecessarily involving in the matters of the states. In by this we all learn that India satisfies almost all the features of a federal system of government but still we can't we don't and we can't call it a complete federation because India also has the unitary features and some other unique features. That means India is more a federal system of government, not a complete federation. Thank you friends, have a nice day.